Ladies and gentlemen, filmmakers and moviegoers alike, welcome to Critically Casual. I'm your host, Cuffs, and joining me as always is the amazing dorky Dev. Hi, Dev. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, why did we do this week? <laughs> because okay. it works for Adaptation Month, duh. Yeah, we're closing out Adaptation Month, number yeah. two. All right. Adaptation Harder. <laughs> um, and by adaptation harder, man, this was harder to get through this month. <laughs> a little bit, especially in these last two movies. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I do feel like, not to spoil things, but I feel like mo movies that we did earlier in the month were worse. Uh, well, I'm looking back at movies we did because I've already blocked them out. Yes, yes, those were pretty bad. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of liked these more than... Um, than previous weeks okay not the previous week previous week we did the batman nolan trilogy which you know that's just good good movies. movie amazing yeah not great adaptations as i said yeah uh, but good movies mm -hmm. i stand by that opinion that they're not good adaptations <laughs> i don't blame you oh uh, all right all right so are you ready to start talking about this week yeah all right so this week um, I've called it totally not merchandising. This week's totally not all about merchandising. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. because we're talking about Prince of Persia. I, I cut out, I cut the title short on this one. It's Prince of Persia, the sands of time. And then we're going to hop into battleship or uh, sail in the battleship. I should say, uh -huh. I'm so clever. Oh, shut up. <laughs> So, uh, do you have anything you want to say or do before we start talking about these movies here, Dev? No, let's just, let's get going. All right, then let's freaking start this thing. Um, start talking about Prince of Persia, so. Yep, Same Prince Persia. Yeah. With, uh, which came out, um, on May 28th, 2010, um, directed by Mike Newell. Um, with a budget of two hundred million dollars. Do you want to guess opening U.S. weekend without looking it up? So two hundred million for the yes. budget. I'm gonna guess after watching this movie, opening weekend only. Opening weekend only. Three mil. <laughs> Times 10. Okay, um, I was thinking 30 mil, but I was like, is that too generous? <laughs> oh, no, you would have been right. Okay. Uh, you would have been on the dot. Damn, um, I was, it was, oh, I should have went with my gut. You should have <laughs> went with your gut. Um, with a gross US at 90 mil and cumulative worldwide gross at 336 mil. Did not make its money back. Because as we discussed, you need to double to triple your budget to make your money back. Yeah. Uh, because advertising. of advertising. Yeah. Um. So it did not make its money back. Man, it's been a theme this month, and I for I didn't realize how much of a theme this was gonna be going throughout this month. Unintentional this was unintentionally the theme of the month. That these movies just flopped at the box office or oh whitewashing. No, and then yes. whitewashing. <laughs> yes. Which is kind of important. <laughs> yes. Like Man, <laughs> casting Jake Gyllenhaal. As the Prince of the, Persia. <laughs> as the Prince of Persia. Didn't... Uh, I, can't, I can't say did no one think of this because we talked about it with Ghost in a Shell with what came out like two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, just just, just cast someone. What? I mean, yeah. We have Jake Gyllenhaal as the Prince of Persia. We have uh, Gemma Alterton Adder, Arderton, which she's British. Uh, we have Ben Kingsley, which... This dude is uh, English, British as well. So, you, I, 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 these are definitely Persian people. 100%. Uh, <laughs> which, by the way, Marvel Connections, real quick, for yes. this movie. Hit me this with movie them. is nuts for the Marvel Connections. We haven't had a few, we haven't had a lot of Marvel Connections recently. I will <laughs> say that. Um, but, Jay Gyllenhaal as Mysterio. Ben Kingsley, the Mandarin. Ooh. You have Alf Alfred Milano, who technically is in a Marvel connection, but from Spider-Man 2, Doc Doc? 
like forgot he was in this movie. <laughs> um, like I, you know, look at this. This cast is actually like if this cast wasn't so whitewashed, it's a fucking fantastic cast. The problem is there's a lot of whitewashing, and it's just especially in hindsight of what we've been talking about the last several weeks. <laughs> Very much so. Problem. <laughs> like, where is uh, where is he? Uh, the guy who was one of the brothers. Um, Are you talking about Tuss or Garciv? Garciv, the one who the fighty one. Yeah, that's Garciv. Is that Toby Campbell? Toby Campbell. Yes. Yeah, dude from Nottingham as well. <laughs> um, who also played Doom in Fan Fortit. <laughs> fan four stick. <laughs> I'm just gonna fuck it up because I hate that movie. Anyway, fan four so. stick. Well, I, fan four stick. <laughs> Whatever. We will eventually review that. We one will of say these we, days. one of these days we will get to it. I already know what we've already planned. What movie we're pairing it with? Just depends on when that movie becomes available. The the I want to see the movie where uh, uh, Chris Evans. Uh, so I can't really think right now. Where <sighs> Chris Evans meets Chris Evans and. Uh, you stop this Michael now. B. Jordan meets Michael B. Jordan because universes collide and <laughs> whenever we get secret wars okay alright fine um <laughs> down the road um but like man I just rewatching. I'm like this is very <laughs> white <laughs> and it bothers me <laughs> and becoming more conscious of this especially because like we've like we've talked about it on the show more and more because we've mm -hmm. become more aware of it and it's mm -hmm. like wow this is one of those moments where it's like you couldn't cast anyone yeah you can change the casting just a little tiny bit maybe a little just a, <sighs> just a, just a tiny bit especially and like especially when i look into the some of these things like uh, because some of their choices for costume design as well got me off. Like, if we put aside the social commentary and how wrong this is, there's just wrong things about this movie, too. Yes. Like, for instance, I couldn't stand watching Tamina in this movie because she paired to me to be extremely modern. Like... When I expect to see a look on somebody, be it their hair, be it their outfit, I expect something a little... Not that, I guess. We, I don't really know what time period this is, but she sticks out the most to me in this whole movie. Uh, just based on her costuming and, and her hair design and all that random stuff. Uh, going past that, uh, a lot of other things I thought were really easy and obvious from the very beginning. Like, um, who our main antagonist was, I thought, like, as soon as... You could almost tell immediately... Without watching yeah. the movie, who it is? I'm trying to say this without spoilers, um, and the whole time, it's just poorly done action scenes where, like the the cinematography of the fighting and what's going on is just poor and off, and you can't tell really what's going on. And yep. Oh, excuse me. Additionally, there's no good character development in this movie. <laughs> Where the relationships between characters or the character themselves and how they develop through this movie doesn't really change much. I mean, ultimately, what happens with our main character, Dastan, he does technically go through a pretty big journey. And he is different. But the journey doesn't matter by the end of it. Nope. It does not it doesn't. Because he's a better person and that's what matters. But that's the only thing that's changed. And when you put it into perspective with other things that's happened in this movie, where and where the movie ends up, it just kind of doesn't work. It, pulls, it pull, like it just it, it does what you fear mm -hmm. a movie will do, which means just no consequences. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, man. It's just like there are definitely a couple of things I wish. That could have stayed. A couple of things I wish would have changed. Uh, a handful of things I want to change for sure is just why, like design in general. Like, what what was the idea with the assassins? I don't like them. 
They make very little sense to me, especially because each one's like a knight of Ren in their own specialties. Uh, but uh, they just felt kind of forced in to me. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Hi, DMP. I see your messages here. And technically, no, this is not the Har Har podcast. This is the Critically Casual podcast. Yes, on the Har Har uh, HQ channel. <laughs> Har podcast is on Fridays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um... <laughs> but going back into this movie of Prince of Persia, um, I thought a lot of things in the story was obvious itself. And then the relationships that were built were forced. And... <sighs> I don't really know what else to say, honestly. Like it's it's not as like I remember watching this and having fun with it as a like a what this was 2010. Yes, middle schooler. Oh no, was I in high school? I was in high, high school. school, early high school. Yeah, this was like your first year of high school, wasn't it? No, second, second, probably. Year. Well, depends. May I would have just graduated the first year, or we would have just I would have just passed. That would that would have been uh, last month of freshman. For me. Yeah, that sounds right. That was, yeah. So yeah, we were young high schoolers who po- like this was the first time I've seen this movie actually myself, and ah. um, I would say to me my favorite part of the whole thing just if I was going off of visuals, you no know, I like visual things. My favorite part of the movie was probably when he turns on the dagger, and you get to see the effect that it has. The and- sands of time. Yeah. And those sands of time are so confusing, especially when we get to the end of the movie. Like, yep. I have so many complaints that if we could go into spoilers, which we aren't on this movie, um, I would dig into the ending of this movie so hard. Like, there are so many things about the ending of this movie in relation to the sands of time that I don't like. <laughs> so. Understandable. But otherwise... There are things that you could like about this movie. Like, I do like the acting. I thought Jake Gyllenhaal was fine. I thought Ben Kingsley was fine. Um, the people that I thought could have used some work were definitely Tamina. Like, not that she's a bad actress, Gemma uh, Arterton. Uh, but I don't feel like this was her role. I think something about the... She was a Princess Leia type, but was still the damsel in distress all at the same time. Yeah, I see that. So, I don't think that she really... They were trying to make her the powerful female character, but kept having her get kidnapped. Exactly. So, it just kind of didn't work out for me. Um, Gar- like, Garciv, like the aggressive guy, I didn't really like him in this movie. Uh, his brother, Tuss, Richard Coyle... He did fine, I think. Um, the only other person that I really did like was probably Ronald uh, Ronald Pickup as the king, who because um, I kind of like his not necessarily. Oh, well, I guess I kind of like his knowledge and foresight, but it's not necessarily him being a good actor. It's just the character being written in a way that's enjoyable for me, at least. So, well, the writing could be terrible. And the good a good actor can make it work. You need a good actor to make good writing work. It's dependable, yeah. Dependable, yeah. <laughs> the uh, who was it? One guy. Um, was it this one? Uh, the one character who was probably at least. I mean, what did you think of the companionship of Shikamar and uh, Seso? I'm pretty sure they're characters from the game. I think so. Maybe. And I don't remember the games well enough. I never played the games either. <laughs> so, um, I'm I'm sure they're probably they're almost definitely characters from the game, because why else would they be in this movie otherwise, other than to know. pad the runtime, which this movie doesn't need a padded runtime. It's already two hours long. No, it's not. It's barely in. Oh, it is two hours, isn't it? With credits, it felt a lot faster. Long. It didn't feel that, fast to me. It felt way faster than that to me. I mean, okay, let me rephrase that. 
I felt the story jumps were really fast. Or it was like, we're here, and then 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 we're done. But the segment, like, there was no journey. There was just moments in this movie. That's fair. And I wanted more I'm journey. Argue that. <laughs> I'm not going to argue that. I'm just more going to say that uh, it, it was faster than I thought it was going to be. It's funny, a movie about time. Both of us feel opposite about how this movie lasted. I felt it dragged on. <laughs> that's fair. Hey, that's why we have different opinions. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know. There's not really anything else in here I find entertaining to really talk about. Oh, that's oh fair. There's not a lot left to yeah. talk about in the movie. There's one thing I thought was kind of funny. Because... Um, this movie is ultimately a story about like uh, coming of age and becoming a leader and uh, knowing right and wrong, essentially. But um, it also sneaks in a little counter story, a little jab kind of joke about economics and um, technically a bit about taxes and stuff. So uh, I thought that was kind of funny and also really out of place. Worth bringing up because this movie from 2010, targeting kids, makes a joke about taxes. Like, That's fair. So, it just kind of felt out of place, it, but it also didn't really feel like an adult joke either. No. So, it, fe it fe felt weird. So, it's just something I wanted to bring up because, uh, you know. Just seems like a strange idea to throw in there and i guess it's because that character that's probably what that character did but in this story that character isn't really needed like i mean he isn't they are and they aren't like shikamar and seso if you really bring boil it down are not needed in this movie but they are made needed for the finale for one specific moment so, That's a fair way of putting it. I don't know. It was just... It, I probably won't watch this movie again, if I'm being honest. Especially, too, because they have they have the idea of these, like, power... Like, cosmic powers and things. But there's inconsistency in all the rules on what happens. Like, this guy can control snakes, except he can't control... When it matters. And, you know. So... <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that's really all I have at the moment. Is there anything else you want to talk about in Prince of Persia? No, there's not much left in this movie to talk about. All right. So, the, in that case, I'm going to give you your 10 popcorn kernels. I'm going to give it a 4.5. 4.5. Or a below average movie, huh? Yeah. Would be above average if it wasn't whitewashed. <laughs> Okay, I hear you. I was going to put this at a five myself. Just very... So five overall by our rating system. Yeah, it just exists. It's here. It, I Like I said, I probably won't watch it myself. And it did give me a bunch of other movie vibes, too, now that I think about it. Like, I was like, am I watching a modernized Aladdin? Am I watching a, an older version of Assassin's Creed? Am I... Yeah. <laughs> What a lot of those vibes too. Yeah. What movie am I watching here? So, uh, yeah, that's that's Prince of Persia. It exists. It's an okay movie. It does its stuff. Well, I better so I can move on here. There we go. Pressing buttons. All right. So now we're gonna move on to movie two. Unless anybody has any questions about this movie before we move on to movie two, because you know. It's always a good time for questions. This is also be a good time for an ad read if we had one. Well, this is one we would do ad reads. Exactly. For this podcast. Mm -hmm. So, uh, sponsors, if you're listening. Manscaped. <laughs> yes. Uh, recommendations? Yes, we do. On occasion, we even have, believe it or not, we do have a viewer's choice every once in a while. Which we could probably do that coming up here for December. 
Uh oh. Why an uh oh? I just oh, it always goes well for us. <laughs> I mean, it would probably be we'd probably rig it in some way that we'd want. Like, hey guys, we want to do Christmas movies nearing Christmas. So, do you want to do Die Hard or do you want to do Shrek Christmas Story? And the answer is probably going to be Die Hard. <laughs> Uh-huh. Especially because we can vote. And only like three people usually vote. So. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Yeah. So we're going to start moving on to the next movie here, which is Battleship. You want to give us the info rundown? Yes. Yeah, came down May. It came out May 18th, 2012. Pretty close to the, when the other one came out, Prince of Persia. Um, with a director of uh, Peter Berg um, with a budget of $209 million. You want to guess how much it made U.S. opening weekend? Is it $30 million? $25 million. Okay. <laughs> See, I, I, pretty damn close. I, I stuck with it uh, this time. <laughs> gross U.S. at $65 million and worldwide Cumulative gross at three hundred three million. So, the, and did not make its money back even close to double. No. So, immediately after I got done watching this movie, the first thing I thought was, "This movie forgets where most movie money comes from. That's China, and this is a very America centric movie." And like, don't get me wrong. They kind of tried to counteract it by having a Japanese crew along with an American crew um, in this movie. But it wasn't enough to make this not about the U.S. versus aliens. And, and we've seen better versions of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I will defend this movie for one thing, though. Okay. There's one part I actually kind of enjoyed. Hmm. It's when Thunderstruck starts. I kind of like that, yeah. Thunder. Ah, mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, like, it's got this moment where a bunch of people show up and are like, how can we help? And yeah. you're kind of like, oh, shit, this is kind of fucking rad. This is... <laughs> and then and then it, it cuts to um, Taylor uh, Kritz, who we've talked about him before when we did 21 Bridges. <laughs> this man's career is fucking cursed to me because he's not a bad actor i will continue to defend him but he had he was in snakes on a plane which is not a great movie it's a fun movie not a great movie mm -hmm. x-men origins wolverine mm -hmm. uh he was in friday night lights the tv series which was great um john carter which is arguably disney's bomb um same year he did battleship um he had what else? He was in American Assassin and a Lone Survivor. Um, but he hasn't really had that role that breaks him out. Because mm -hmm. he's not a bad actor. I will continue to say that. He's not bad. It's just he keeps ending up in bad movies. Mm -hmm. He needs to fire whoever his agent was. Because the best movie I've seen him in is 21 Bridges. He's not in the whole movie. I was just thinking about 21 Bridges. I was like, which character was he again in that movie? And I just looked at pictures of it. Yeah, he was not bad in that movie, but he wasn't in the whole movie. That was Chadwick His Boseman's role. movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not, like, I will, because I will say the scene he walks into a hallway and you start hearing the na, 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 tr, tr, before they say it. Before they say it, you just start hearing the, the guitar part. And all of a sudden the lights start turning on in a hallway. And it gets to him. Thunder. <laughs> Thunder. And I'm kind of like, oh, this is this is kind of a hype moment. Mm -hmm. This movie <laughs> isn't great, but that part's fucking great. <laughs> that is arguably why I'm that 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 entire part, like the end of this movie, is entirely why I'm gonna give it the rating I'm gonna give it. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. That makes sense. Um, um 
this movie's too fucking long, though. I 100% agree, but it's too long again. Too much. <laughs> Especially for what it's based off of. It's based off of a board game. But the little pen pieces come flying through the air, Steve. Oh, I know. That's the one or two parts oh. of this film that, well, technically three. There's three parts of this movie that match off of that board game. One, they're on an ocean with boats. Two, the aliens. Well, and there's a battleship. That's the boats part. <laughs> well, still. Yeah. Two is the fact that the aliens use pegs. And then the third part is that one scene with the map and the buoys. That, those are the only things that remind me of Battleship, the board game. Otherwise, this is someone's original attempt at a movie. And... I mean... I'd probably watch this again, honestly. Like I would too. Yeah. <laughs> In comparison to the last the one, this is on the list of <laughs> movies that we will watch together at some point and have an audio track to go over it. <laughs> like I, there's so many things I think about when uh, when I because I wrote a good handful of notes on this movie. Like comparisons with like how the characters develop, like our main character and why he makes the decisions he makes. Uh, I have notes on the design of these, like, ships and why they look, and maybe why they'd look this way. But then, or why, I'm uh, questioning why the fuck they move the way they move, that's for fucking sure. But this movie just, just doesn't make sense Air. to me. Yeah. She doesn't? Well, I'm pretty sure, like, this isn't a spoiler, because I'm pretty sure it was there, but it's cut. I'm pretty sure there's an entire subplot of alien resistance members in this movie that was cut. Quite possibly. Like based off of like several scenes that feel like that could would have been the through line, but now those scenes don't make sense why they happen that way. Mm-hmm. There's what? a scene where he sees the visions in the eye, and there's a scene where an alien sees another character, the nerd character, and doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm why those exist when that isn't the through line yeah there's no point to having that in the movie. yeah and there's also the moment with the super scientist getting his equipment that's what i'm talking about where he looks at him and just eh. i was gonna say yeah there's that where he doesn't do anything and then there's the vision sorry i thought you were putting them in one scene those are separate no 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 yeah. separate scenes my apologies uh oh yeah that's the other name where I... That's the other place where I saw this name. Spencer Confidential. <laughs> Peter Berg also directed Spencer Confidential, a movie that we watched. Oh, right. We watched that this year. Yeah. I was think- Way back at the beginning of everything. Mm-hmm. I was thinking really hard. I was like, where else that have I seen March. that name? I thought... That was, that was the week everything fell apart. I think it was, yeah. No, it was the week after everything fell apart because we did 28 Days... And then uh, Ix Underground and Spencer. Hmm. But um, the reason I was thinking about that so hard is because I thought that this was possibly uh, like he had something to do with one of the Transformers movies or like Bumblebee or something like that. Um, Because this movie definitely has some of that like uh, flair that you think of when you think of Transformers, which makes sense because this was made by the same company that made transformers universal and uh hasbro yep so like i could see how there's a lot of similarities just lots of explosions and metal flying through the air and um oh um, can i point something out i heard people talk shit about her in this movie but i think she's actually pretty fun in this movie rihanna rihanna is one of the best parts of this movie i I, arguably like (laughs) like I remember people talking crap about her in this movie, but watching this movie, I'm like, how? Like, how did you think she was bad in this? Because she's, she's the only in female in this movie. 
But she's not. <laughs> Just damn by uh, Brooklyn Decker. Honestly, in my opinion, the cast of this movie doesn't do a bad job. They sell the shit out of this movie. Absolutely. They all fit the character. <laughs> they make me enjoy this movie. There's a lot of things that make me enjoy this movie, even though there's a lot of things that don't make me enjoy <laughs> I this fucking movie. hate this movie at the same time. <laughs> but, like, this is a fun, dumb movie. This is, like, this is like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is, like the first Transformers movie where I kind of enjoy the dub mm -hmm. in its own little way. And I'm Absolutely. like, I kind of hate you, but damn you for it having makes me, fun doing this. It makes me think of Pacific Rim or Fast and Furious Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, like, <laughs> it knows it's dumb. So it's just going to have fun with it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's, there's just silly, silly, silly stuff in here. <laughs> like i just i didn't i don't get why people would talk shit about her in this movie because she was great <laughs> like watching i'm like uh, i heard not some great things about rihanna in this movie i wonder how it's actually gonna... she was fucking fantastic mm -hmm. what were you people smoking back in 2012 <laughs> it's because oh it's probably because they make a joke during the end credit sequence which did you know that there was one? Because I didn't until this watch through. I've seen this movie maybe twice now. This is my third time. Really? And I, I mean, never. This is why I love doing it on YouTube because I could just go over the scroll bar <laughs> and see if see, there's anything later. Yeah, at the end of every movie that we watch, I always fast forward through the credits. Like, I still watch them, but I fast forward through them a bit. And that I pause every time that I hit a scene. And I was like, there's nothing in this movie. I've watched this like tie twice. And then I hit the end credit scene and I was like, Oh, what is it setting up for? Nothing. <laughs> nothing happens. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's legitimately nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's setting up for something. But, but this has been eight years. It's not yeah. going to happen. I'm curious, though. I gen That's something we'll talk about in spoilers, what they would have been setting up and what board game it would have been based off of. Oh no! It doesn't make sense to me where it was and everything. Like the entire time, I'm sitting there like, "What game are they setting up with this and where it is?" And I'm trying, like, I'm still trying to figure out what it could have been. Hmm. And I've got nothing. I have to try at the moment, but we'll figure it out together later in spoilers. But um, um, yeah, no, I think this movie's like this movie is worth watching at least once. I'm straight up gonna say that. Mm -hmm. Everyone should watch this movie once just for a dumb fun time, especially with friends. This Thank would just be a fun movie to like talk shit about, but also enjoy in a way. Cause I mean, there's one scene where, uh, John Tui, I think is how you say his last name, um, who plays, uh, chief petty officer, Walter, the beast Lynch. Um, and he says, Mahalo motherfucker," and gets cut off, but he's saying Mahalo motherfuckers. <laughs> And it's one of those fucking moments where I hear it. I'm like, if I make a movie that has anyone who's like Hawaiian and gets the opportunity to say that, I'm having them say it because that is a fucking badass line. That is a badass one liner. And I fucking love it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so dumb and so cheesy, but it's like just the right amount. I wish they would have let it slide. This movie was PG-13, wasn't it? Yeah, you yeah. could have you could have had the one. You could have had the one F bomb. That could have been it. That would have been great. I mean, but they also have the second cutaway later on where it's like, um, let's put some lead in this mother fire. <laughs> and it cuts that away. was also great. <laughs> the old man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the old guys were great in this movie. See, that was something I actually had a little bit of question about. Because I love the older people. I 100% love that this has veteran appro like appreciation because those people have fought hard for this country in our past. So uh, they deserve to have a movie that um, idolizes them and makes them very important people. But at the same time, you think about it, you really think about it, like they're having cent uh, ceremonies for real veterans in the movie. Like, thank these veterans for all their service. And now... These actors who are pretending to be military people. <laughs> it is a little weird. Um, like, it, it throws me off a little bit. Like, I guess I would rather have some sort of military appreciation for our veterans than none. But it just feels out of place 
when this is very obviously like a ridiculous movie. Well, what was that one that we did early? Did, I feel like we did one early. Was it last year that we did? Or was that this year? Uh, the uh, kind of military one. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, not really. Was that? No, was that uh, Chadwick Week? When we did uh, 21 Bridges and um, whatever his second movie was. Was that? Yeah, was that him? Was that his week that we did that movie? I can't remember what movie, like, I can't remember the details of the movie because it was a while ago. Like, mm-hmm. probably a year ago almost. Um, so my brain's mushed from that far back. But was it his week that we did that? Let me double check here. I just have to move a thing out of the screen. The one where it's like he's got that job to go take out that person on the hill thing. I, like, you're saying things that all sound familiar, but you're reminding me of other movies. <laughs> I know, it's a very, but it was very low budget and stuff. Uh, do you remember? It would have been November. November, okay. Last year, we did 21 Bridges. I'm looking. Terminator, Charlie's Angels. Rick. Frozen. That was the first week of December. Okay. We did oh freaking pop ups. The kill hole. Kill hole. That's what I'm thinking of. Okay. Um and uh, Jay brings up that the poster doesn't line up with people. Yeah, well that's just what this poster does. I know it's got four names on it. Uh what bothers me more is Liam Neeson is in this movie, but not in this movie. What are you talking he's about? He has like five lines and he's a very motivating factor for our main character. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. That's more my issue with it. <laughs> Honestly, though, this movie's fun. If you haven't seen it, at least watch it with a friend, in my opinion. It's kind of, it's stupid. It's not a good movie. <laughs> no. But it's fucking fun. Especially in be- its own dumb way. It just takes forever to happen. Mm-hmm. This is also a long movie. It's even longer than Prince of Persia. Yes. <laughs> Which is weird that I felt that one was faster. I thought, I swear to you, I thought that movie was an hour and a half when I watched it. Yeah, no, that is not. <laughs> felt like an hour and a half when I watched it. This movie felt like three hours. Mm-hmm. Which evens out to about how long I was, left, uh, was watching these few movies. But damn. This movie just takes a while. It does, especially, and and then it has things that bug me. Like, I have determined after watching this movie, and I think one or uh, last week's movies, the third Batman movie, for instance, it had many scenes where they do in-camera zooms where it's it's an action moment. People are getting intense and up close and fighting. And, like, in this movie, for instance, we see the alien in one of the ships, and they – do an in-camera zoom where they zoom, they use their zoom lens to focus, punch in on the the the, the alien as he's kind of walking through people. And I have determined after this movie and after last week's movie, so I just do not like that in non like first person documentary esque style movies. Like it just makes me blatantly aware that I'm watching a movie. That's fair. It it just doesn't fit for me in most films. Like it works for me in say like the office or it works for me in a documentary or it works for me in like, even though I hate the movie Cloverfield paradox, like, because that's the theme of the movie or not paradox. Sorry. Just regular old Cloverfield. Oh, like that one I hate because it's a found footage movie, but it makes okay, sense. It? You know what? Maybe we, maybe we, you know what? I just thought of something. Are we going to change next month's movies now? Do we want to? Haven't we? Oh, but it's such a good theme. Them? It's no, we haven't. We haven't done that we one. We haven't in, done the original. In, we haven't done the original. We haven't done Street. Well, that's fine. We've done 21. No. Maybe I have to backtrack, but I don't think we did. Okay, we won't do it next month. We have to study what we've done. Yeah. Anyways. I was about to say, uh, the I stuff we picked out next week Horror is Field is a fantastic movie. <laughs> okay. But it's just, it's, I just don't like found footage. I'm sorry. Just me. You don't like found footage. Yeah. I said. (laughs) 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 And that's just what those moments make me think of, especially in action movies. Um, It doesn't fit in the 
ethos, pathos, whatever the Latin term is. Not logos. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I, I will say, though, this, this movie just... I think this, like, the cast had fun with this movie, and it shows. Mm -hmm. So, like, I can appreciate this movie for what it is. It's dumb. It's stupid. Mm -hmm. But it has fun with its stupid, which makes me enjoy stupid movies from time mm -hmm. to time. Like, I think that's how I enjoy a stupid movie, is that obviously people know it's not great, but they're going to have fun with it, and they're going to do a little bit of ham acting and kind of overact, but sell the movie because they're overacting. Um mm -hmm. In the sense that you could tell they're just they're just go, going out for it at this point. Like, you could tell it's not overacting in the sense that they're, like, trying hard, if that makes sense. Because there's a difference between a bad movie that's taking itself too seriously, and you laugh at that, mm -hmm. and a bad movie that's not taking itself too seriously, where the people are just having fun with it. Yeah. And that's this. That's this, for sure. <laughs> Which also makes it a fun movie, usually. It's self-aware of it's stupid. Yes. Especially because you really think about it. Like, there's one scene in particular I want you to think of. Well, in comparison. Because there's there's a scene on the ship where the one alien, like, fights and takes out three or four men, essentially. And then it's compared to the scene. <laughs> what? And then That's I... Such a moment. <laughs> yeah. And then I compare it to the scene where our... Later? Yeah, later in the movie where our main yeah. veteran dude fights an alien. So, things aren't consistent. <laughs> but it's having fun, Steven. But it's having fun, 100%. So, <laughs> there's, it's just, yeah. This movie has some weird decisions, but it has fun. Which makes it kind of fun to watch. Yes. It's just, and it's well made at times. Like, there was a lot of moments in this movie where I was like, wow, this is well digitally put together. A lot of the explosions, a lot of the special effects I liked a lot. The only time in the movie that I didn't like a part in the, like I didn't like a scene is when the boat starts to pull a Titanic and the rudder slams against the bottom. And I was like, that's a little too fake for my liking. But every yeah. other part of this movie, I was for the most part fine with it. I mean, it's not, Good. But it has fun. Yes. <laughs> this is one of those strange movies where if I want to talk about technicality, this movie does modern age special effects and like um, cinematography very well. It It is a very well put together action film. But if I like, I I don't know. But if you want to actually critique a movie, this is one that you would rail into. Yes. There's... But you don't want to rail into it because you had fun. Kind of. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's in that weird gray area that you that you had. This is the same problem you had with um, Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Yeah, that you one... really wanted to rail into that movie, but you actually enjoyed yourself on some it level. Hurt. Yeah. But you couldn't. <laughs> and this is one of those moments where, Steven, you let the movie movie mm -hmm. and just let go. I kind of have to you. with this one. I'm so proud of you. You kind of have to. Like, the alien welcome. ships Welcome to the jump. casual. <laughs> Why do the alien ships jump? All right. All right. Let's rate the movie first before we get into that. All right. I've got to give you your popcorn. I'm going to give this one a six and a half. <laughs> you, I gave it exactly a six and a half, too. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is a six and a half. It's 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 definitely not like a subpar movie in my opinion, mm. just because it has fun. All right, that is a solid rating on a bad movie. Wow! Like hell it's, yes, it's so strange because I could almost see it being a seven, but the critic in me is like, fuck no. <laughs> that's, that's exactly why I'm like, I can't quite give it a seven because it's not a seven. But part of me wants to give it a seven just because I kind of enjoyed, especially that final act. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is so dumb. I love it. Mm -hmm. So, right. let's get ready to spoil it. Right. So, yeah, anyone who doesn't want to be spoiled over an eight year old movie, <laughs> it's not very good. Dude, all right, I'll explain what my favorite scene from the get go. All go right. For it. So, <laughs> part, I wrote this down on a sticky note. I kind of hate that I like the end of Battleship with the Missouri Battleship. Mm hmm. This is the first time we get a battleship in the whole movie, actually mm -hmm. doing battleships. So, 
the Missouri is in Pearl Harbor as the museum. Um, and they're sitting there like, because they get there and like, we, we, I mean, we have a boat. And they're like, well, how the fuck are we getting this working? We're all new guys. We're all mm -hmm. used to the new like destroyer class, which is far better than the, the battleships. Mm -hmm. um, battleships. I don't even know how to get this thing started. Yeah, those are floating punching on, bags. <laughs> as the scene's going on, you slowly see more vets from like the Korean War, World War II, um, from Nam, from just like every war that happened mm -hmm. <laughs> showing up and just slowly entering the boat and until like a group of them walk up to um to our uh to to, to what's his fucking name um hopper, hopper. um and it's like what can we do sir mm -hmm. <laughs> he's just <laughs> how can we help <laughs> you've already done so much for your country i can't ask you to do this but i'm asking and they're like what can we do <laughs> yeah and then all of a sudden you hear the start of thunderstruck <laughs> The lights are off in the hallway of the destroy of the battleship, and the lights sl start slowly turning on as it closer to Hopper. And when Hopper's in the light, thunder! <laughs> and it's just all of the new crew and the old crew go into what positions they would be in, and like the old guys being like, "You got that? You you ready to learn today?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Holy shit! When did this movie just turn up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so dumb. It changes directions, it. and it's good." Yeah. <laughs> so good because like the, the part of the other the other part of the movie also is kind of funny too when they are they're all on just like the last destroyer the dude's brother's dead which is really glossed over oh absolutely um, <laughs> but like they're on the ship they bring it they they got a lot of the crew of the japanese ship over um with uh yugi nagata on the ship now and he's helping run the whole thing with the destroyer and the buoys and all that um and that part's really fucking cool as well because it's kind of like, oh, you should be firing earlier and you're like, learn, learn faster. Mm -hmm. um, it's so dumb but fun. Um, and when they get on the ship and like the old guys to the uh, to the um, the spotter is like, you gotta get on the telescope or just stay in there. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. sorry, sir. <laughs> Jokes on it. Yeah. <laughs> Rihanna gets into the, the weapons room. Mm -hmm. You're ready to like, play with the big boys. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, this shit's fucking fire. What the fuck? Mm. <laughs> Where did it? When, when did the movies change to this? <laughs> and the battleship goes to where like the shield generator moved, and they're like, oh, I didn't know it can move, and it turns into a giant one of them. It's like, oh, it's their battleship. <laughs> this is stupid. I love it. The battleship is sinking a battleship. <laughs> this is so dumb. Yeah. I because <laughs> they fucking drift a battleship yeah, that, with an anchor turn. Yeah, an anchor it's drop. It's Sea of Thieves. Even when doing Sea of Thieves. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good, though, because the ship just fucking... <laughs> just fucking turns. And then it's like, fire! <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the best part about the whole thing afterwards, too, is like, oh, I finally understood the art of war. Shoot, where, uh, be where they're not. And he's like, that's not the art of war. <laughs> like, it's not? Oh. <laughs> he's still, dude, it's so dumb. And then the moment where the thing still can shoot the fucking ball things. Oh, yeah. And they're like, we only got one round. <laughs> Pleasure Let's doing do business. <laughs> Fire it. All of a sudden, because the shield generator is down the fucking... Yeah, you X mocking us. You know it's coming, because he's like, I want every... Gleam is like, I want every jet over there immediately. Yeah, they at least explain <laughs> it. Like, there's yeah. there's no there's tension, but there's no tension, and it's like, oh. Because you know it's coming, but at the same time, you're like, oh, but maybe they won't get there in time. You know they're going to get there in time, yeah. but your brain's playing along, because this movie's <laughs> dumb, and you're having fun. Because <laughs> they hit one of those fucking... That round hits one of those generator things and blows everything up. And I'm like, how did that happen? <laughs> Does it make a lick of sense? But it's stupid fun. Oh, the end of this movie's great, and that's why I love it so much. I would rewatch the end of this movie over and over and over just because of how stupid it is. Oh, it's also got the Mahala motherfucker line. Yeah. It's just great, dude. 
<laughs> and you're mentioning all these things and there's so many other stuff like you're like this is great and i'm sitting here like this is one thing i hated about that there was one thing i hated about that there's oh there's stuff i hate about it but i'm turning my brain off and yeah. just being like you know what Movie's he's drifting a battleship <laughs> he just drifted the uss missouri <laughs> This is what I want from Fast 8 <laughs> or Fast 9 when we get there, man. Dude, he's <laughs> swinging across a rope bridge. I know. I can't we're getting wait. it. We're getting <laughs> stupid in Fast 9. <laughs> this is the Steven I want for that, though. All right? <sighs> You're getting there. You're, this, is, this is prep for Fast and Furious. <laughs> See, the difference was I've seen this movie enough times to know to not take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but by the time we get through the next three of them, You'll know to stop taking them seriously, because by five, you need to stop taking it seriously. See, what needs to happen is I just need to watch the next Fast movie like three times before the review. <laughs> <laughs> All in one week, see it three times, be like, oh. You know what I'll do? You know what I'll do? I'll buy each of us the box set. <laughs> I'll order you the box set so you can just watch through them. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> but damn, yeah, no, the ships, man. I don't get into their movement. It doesn't yeah, make sense. They're, they're ships that travel through space and can float through water and hover just above the surface to the point where they're always dripping water. But at the same time, to move, they go up and then they go splash and then they, they go, go up. They hit the yeah. water and fucking they wail. <laughs> And then they land, and then they go up, and then they, like, why the fuck did they move that way? What was the point of the design of that? So that the buoy th scene can happen. I, yes. The fucking that's Also, the dumb. aliens don't like sunlight. Which, if they come from a world that's exactly like Earth, which is a plot Similar. point. Which, by the way, did that planet look like Coruscant to you? A little bit. <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, how do you not think there's intelligent life there? Yeah, especially all the circular rings found on the yeah. surface. You're like... Yeah, there's life there for sure. Why are we beaming them? <laughs> what were you thinking? Oh, well, it took them six years to get there. So, yeah. <laughs> so? Yeah. And that was something that I thought was dumb too. Because in the very beginning of this movie, our main character, Hopper, is very much not interested in anything at all. Like, nothing. He's a good-for-nothing, lazy bum who only wants to get with this woman that he meets at a bar on his birthday. Like, that's it. And... Don't waste the wish. Yeah. He wastes, wish. <laughs> he wastes his wish on getting a no, girl. He didn't waste the wish, though, because he gets the girl. Yeah, man. he gets the girl at the end, which is fine. But then the thing that got me all mad was six years later, he's at the very beginning of this movie, he's getting kicked out. He's about to get kicked out of the Navy because of dumb decisions that he makes, like fighting a captain of a foreign military. But, you know, whatever. Um,. And he's all upset because he's like, they're going to kick me out of the Navy. But he's forced to be signed into the Navy by his brother, which is impossible to be done by his brother because you have to sign up for the military yourself in the U.S. So, <sighs> sorry. I gotta... There's a lot of questionable things. He should not have made it into the military. Yeah, he never should have made it in there to begin with. And then he's upset about almost being kicked out, which is impossible because he didn't want to be there in the first place. Well, uh, it's possible after six years. Because mm -hmm. he obviously cares by that sixth year. Mm -hmm. But so he's hot-headed. Because he gets in a fight in a bathroom. That's true. That's something that I wrote here as well. Always stubborn. Always misses the point. Also, the fucking... The, the, the soccer scene pissed me off a little bit. <laughs> It did with me too, Just but no not. one would. No one would let him take the PK. Mm -hmm. No one in their right mind. Mm -hmm. But he's stubborn. He's gonna do it. I don't care. But that was that's part of the character development because clearly he fucks up because he's too stubborn to realize that he should let someone else do the job. But then the very next two opportunities he gets, he just lets the people do the job, and he's learned. <laughs> I thought so that you're was thinking too hard about the movie. No. <laughs> well, yes and no, because that's <laughs> I wrote that down here that the soccer the soccer was supposed to be a lot about the, the relationships that he's building. Like him and the the Japanese captain don't like each other because and nope. then he gets kicked in the face by him and then he's all about pride and like this is going to happen because I could do it. And then the next the very next 
point of where he's in charge is his brother dies and his first thought is oh i'm mad i'm gonna take care of this because it's all about me and he starts to rush in but then when the japanese ship gets destroyed his mindset changes and he's like well the last time i tried to do this anger thing i messed up so i'll be kind this time and help well it takes his entire crew going like our dude yeah, his no. entire crew had to yell at him to do it. And then the oh, third... Way, you know who I was surprised to see in this movie? Who's that? Jesse Break... Pillows. I thought you were going to say Rihanna. It's just... No, Jesse Pillows from uh, Breaking ba Bad. <sighs> What's his name? In Breaking Bad? Yeah. I'm looking it up. Don't worry. There it is, uh, Jesse Pillows. There he is. There he is. I see him now. Uh, Todd from Breaking Bad. Uh, the blonde guy who tortures the shit out of I remember him now. I remember him now. He was skinnier back then. Dude, it was, it was. I saw him like, oh shit! I didn't realize you were in this movie. <laughs> you know, one thing also that kind of there was a line in there where in the last movie we had problems about, um, you know, whitewashing, and this movie oh, just uh, straight up racism. Yes, one hundred percent. I'm glad you noticed that it is too. The against this movie mm. is that. There, is this just Hasbro and Universal, like, circa 2010? How they did movies? I think so, yeah. How did a kids game company sign off on that? Yeah, especially because the one line that caught my attention is, I told you it was the North Koreans, which is the one people that we were angry at during that time period in the U.S. And uh, There's... Also, the scene this... with uh, Todd going and just saying, just like mocking Japanese. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's a moment later on when he learned about the buoy system and he like starts to call him something, but doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. And then the part that also gets me, if you get past all that racism stuff, which you kind of have to, if you want to enjoy this movie. Um, it's at least at the front end. Yeah. It's they get it out of the way and then it disappears. Because that's not what matters anymore. <laughs> but um, then they also do stuff like they do many news exposition dumps. Like clearly in oh, our yeah. in oh, our yeah. situation, we just see the three boats and then maybe just the island of Honolulu. But then they're like news broadcasts all around the world are talking about the rioting that is happening and martial law is being declared a call across the world. And it's like. But they don't show us that except for in these news dumps to like yeah. raise the stakes of the film, even though, yeah, you know, it doesn't help. Also, the uh, the aliens were trying to set up communication the entire time and they don't communicate. Don't you think someone's going to think something went wrong? Well, yes. But also my question is, if they lost their communication ship on the way in and they didn't change their trajectory... Were they always going to aim for Hawaii where the communications tower was? Maybe they, well, maybe because the satellite passes over there. They might be going for the satellite still because they could set up in the satellite's trajectory. Maybe, but like the way the movie shows us is the five, the six ships are coming in. Uh, one of them hits the five. satellite. Okay, five ships. The five ships are coming in. One of them hits the satellite and gets sent off somewhere else and then the other four keep going on their path but land next to hawaii so they can set up communications to message earth but it doesn't look like the entire like it doesn't look like they're trying to stop in orbit it doesn't look like they're trying to aim for a specific place it looks like they're always aiming for hawaii based well, on yeah, how like the I'm saying, they're us. going there because that's where the communication beam was coming from mm -hmm. they probably have that so they know that they're they can use the satellite to hitchhike their beam back for communication if we, so if it's this is lost their communication beacon yeah. if that we they got would to, use if we got to see this from the aliens perspective this would have been a damn time to switch the plan b kind of moment yeah pretty much okay but like they have a way to reach us already so like at least we're landing nearby. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite as effective. We're going to have to do some work. It's going to make it so, you know, we might lose everything. But whatever. We got this. We're superior technological. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Uh, and then also uh, talking about the ship that breaks off. So 
the one ship that breaks and falls apart, it lands in a majority where exactly? Outside Hong Kong? I think it was Hong Kong. Yeah. So it lands with a majority of its stuff in Hong Kong. or, But then one tiny capsule lands in the Netherlands? Scotland. Scotland. Which is further. Mm-hmm. Much further. And it's trying to set up it's another a movie? Pod. Yeah. What is it trying to set up? It, I can't figure it out, man. Like, my brain went like, okay, maybe, maybe we'll see something come out of it. Maybe it's like a, a hippo-looking creature. I don't know. <laughs> it's like a white ball. So that was my first thought. And then I thought, mousetrap? I don't know. No. Um, the only things that would make sense for me would be Risk or Stratego. Because those are both Hasbro games. And they're about, like... Militaries moving in on each other and taking over land. So my thoughts like, what if the alien establishes his own territory in Scotland and then the U.S. has to risk it all to save the world? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. None of the setups work. <laughs> or what if it's Connect 4 where the, it has to connect the four different crashed ships into one? <laughs> no matter what sequel was not set up for anything that made sense battleship 2 airships battleship 2 battleship risk. harder <laughs> risk it all um let's see but then other things i want to talk about um let's see here uh, um 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 I want to talk about the three movie plots because there was essentially, well, there was more if you really think about it, but if you simplify it, there was three. There was the A plot, which was Hopper versus the aliens and whatnot. The B plot was our therapist and the veteran. And then the C plot was the love plot between Hopper and the therapist. Yes. Uh, and the question is, how do you make a video game off of a uh, board game off of a, a a movie based off of a board game? And it's very loosely. Yes. Where it's only slightly inspired by it. <laughs> there are the pegs. Mm -hmm. There's the board. And that's There's a battleship. It. Yeah. And a destroyer. Mm -hmm. He sank my battleship, which they did. They. I mean, they didn't. They did. Ah, <laughs> uh, that movie. This movie is stupid. I love it. Yeah, I just thought the thing that really got me was the whole soccer thing. Like, like it fits in this movie because it, but it's the only thing that establishes our characters' relationships with other characters, and at least until like his brother dies, and then he doesn't really care about his brother. Die. Like, it's just water on the bridge really quickly. It's all like, all of this is just it's. So not serious. It's just fun, I guess. Did you have fun, kiddo? I guess. I listen to me sounding like a kid who went on a factory trip. Hey, oh. fuck you! I enjoyed <laughs> going to the uh, Tillamook Cheese Factory. <laughs> Man, I went to the glue factory and all I got was a bottle of Elmer's glue. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I never went on a factory trip. <laughs> I did. It was great. I got cheese and ice cream. I mean, I went on a amusement park trips. So that's different. Yeah. Two. Those one, are great too, though. Yeah, one for physics, and then we did one for band. All right. So let, back to this movie. Are we done here? Are we done talking about battleship? Anything else? Go. I think there's nothing really else we could talk about. Double checking. Uh, I wrote body question mark. Oh, that's right. Do you think our female character, um, not Rihanna, uh, Brooklyn Decker, a.k.a. Sam, was like, why do you think she was hired? Like, I guess the way I should put it, or let me rephrase that. Sorry. Not her specifically, but the the character itself. Do you think the character is more supposed to be there because she's the attractive body? Or do you think she's supposed to be there because she's important for the veteran? 
kind of thing. She fits both roles. Mm -hmm. This is circa 2010 uh, Hasbro Universal. Mm -hmm. So they need their uh, their hot character, quote unquote. Yeah, like, I guess that's a question but I ask a lot. she serves plot and, like, is actually, like, compared to other circa 2010 Universal uh, and... Uh, you mean she's not like Megan Fox who's just there? Or the model from that one after that, or the uh or Megan Fox in uh TMNT? Yeah, kinda. She's not just there. Or that one robot who things. was a lady who was a robot. <laughs> yeah. She actually does stuff. And this isn't us jabbing at Megan Fox, by the way. This is more jabbing the writing. Yeah. Um just to make that clear. Um, because if, if you go back and watch this time, we like Megan Fox was actually enjoyable in these movies. Why did they? Because uh... she the spoke fuck? up. Yeah, I know why they did it. <laughs> but still. So yeah, I guess we're done here with Battleship. Yeah. All right. We've taken all of our moves. We have sunk in all of the enemy ships, and we're on to talk about news and the roundup and whatnot. You didn't need the flatline the podcast. We're still alive. <laughs> yep, we're dead. Show's over, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, so Newsweek. Yeah, Newsweek. There's a couple of things I want to talk about. Um, Like... I'm sure there's big news that I'm missing somewhere. Uh, but Henry Cavill wants to be uh, Bond. Oh, yeah. Did not know that. Dude, and if anyone can will themselves into the role, it's Henry Cavill. But he, but, 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 yeah, I guess that works. I mean, I could see him being Bond as long. I think he'd be great. I think he, like, I don't know. I both think it would work and it wouldn't work at the same time because... Physique wise, I don't think he physically looks like a Bond. Because no, he's fucking, he's he's a meat. He's yeah, a he's punk ripped. A person. Yeah, like it, don't get me wrong. Like it's I like I wouldn't even see things like Chris Hemsworth or Chris Evans. Like they're just too thick of man to be thick with two C's <laughs> of a man to be considered James Bond to me. Like they are cut. <laughs> yeah, they just stand out too much. Like. But I loved Henry Cavill in Man of Uncle. And I was also thinking of uh, Mission Impossible. He'd be great for this, the, the Bond movies. I mean, it'd work, yeah. I mean, I think if I, I'd rather see him as Bond than I would him as Superman. Oh, but he's going to be after Superman and I can't wait. Like, I don't think he's going to be a bad Superman. But the difference is in... A Bond type movie, we get to see more of him as both of like an actor as a person like who interacts with things like people and as a physical actor who like does his own stunts and whatnot. Oh my god, yeah, especially after Mission Impossible. Yeah, but Superman the furthest you do most of the time is get grabbed and thrown and you jump and you're in harnesses and like sure there's conversations with each other, but they're well, I'm looking Different. for more to, in in the Superman movies. I'm looking forward to hopefully better character development for Superman mm -hmm. and more actual Supermaning from him. Scott Eastwood isn't British. That's why he can't play Bond. You got to be the, the thing is you got to be British to play Bond or at least on the the aisle, the British Isles, because um, mm -hmm. Sean Connery is Scottish, right? If I remember correctly. Isn't he Scottish? Sean Connery. Yeah, I believe so. I don't remember. But let me double check. <laughs> yeah, looking it up. Sean Connery. Sean Connery. <laughs> Sorry. His accent really gets me every time. Yeah, he was born in uh, Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, you gotta be born on the British Isle to be, uh, to be Bond. Um, which is why Idris Elba is also in the talk. 
for Bond. And I think he'd also be a great, great Bond. Um, so those are two people that I would love to see play Bond right there. Mm -hmm. Henry Cavill, Idris Elba, either one of them is the next Bond. I'm in, dude. I can see that working out pretty good, I think. You know who should be their Q? Either one of them? Trump in. Matt Smith. I can see it working. I mean, he does go have back the, to a little bit more to the root. I was about to say, like he'd have to be quirkier. He'd have to do the weird hair again. But it could work. I'm fine with going back to a quirky Q, dude. It could work. See it. I mean, yeah, I could see it. <laughs> Either one of them as Bond, and I want Matt Smith as the Q. And that'd be great. Um. Okay. Uh, things I'm going to talk about then. Other things because I like it. Your, I like your idea. It could work. I think the nerd, quirky Q with Matt Smith. Uh, the did, wasn't there also a movement not that long ago to try and get an actor to play a role and it just flopped in his face. I don't know. That probably happens before. It happens a lot. <laughs> but um, things I want to talk about. General Kenobi. Sorry. General. Hello there. Yeah. Um, even you and Gregor, maybe. Um, but other things I want to talk about. So recently there was a movie that released on uh, Disney. So if you're looking for things to watch, like that are relatively cheap. So if you have Disney Plus, um, this movie caught my attention be at first because I thought it was going to be something different, but it's not. It's called Secret Society of Second Born Royals. Um, what what do you think of when you hear this? Secrets. I haven't a clue. Okay. So the premise is, imagine it, it follows this, uh, it says here, Sam, a the second born princess of the kingdom of Illyria, I-L-L-Y-R-I-A, Illyria, Illyria, something like that. And um, she's the second born princess. So she's the one who's not supposed to be meant for anything, really. Like, she's the prize, the one who's like, well... I guess you could be married to this daughter as a treaty <laughs> kind of, yeah. um, but apparently the idea is uh, the second born royalty is sent off to this summer school, which is a, a training program where they learn to establish superpowers. And uh, apparently these superpowers Royals help save the world. And I only bring this up because, you know, superheroes are kind of, or superpower stuff is kind of cool. And it's something new. And sometimes people just need something new that's relatively cheap to watch. So, um, I don't know how it is, but you can watch that. Things I have been watching, though, for instance, before I get back into more news and stuff. Uh, I've been watching Lucifer with my stepmother. Which, um, hey, you sent me a clip of that. Yeah. Kind of funny. It has... A lot of really enjoyable, funny moments for me. Yeah. I enjoy it, and I will probably keep enjoying it. But uh, more back on to news, other things I want to talk about, is uh, James Cameron, according to Deadline, written by uh, uh, Nancy Tartaglione, uh, James Cameron says that Avatar 2 is 100% filmed, and Avatar 3 is about 95% of the way filmed. While give any... Uh, gives praises to New Zealand with their COVID response and how things have worked out with his team. But it just seems weird to me. Like he's already finished filming Avatar 2 and almost done with Avatar 3. Like Dude, almost... this is going to suck. I can't. Why, I do not look forward to us doing these movies. I, I do and I don't. <laughs> like I want to see what he's done with it. Oh, uh, but I hate, I do not like the first one. I have been avidly against the first one because it is such a fucking ham fisted man bad. Um, and like, th like there are better versions of this story is essentially what, how I put it. There mm -hmm. are better versions of white man entered and destroyed things. There are better ways to watch it than that. Visually could be kind of breathtaking. But it's so dry and boring about its message 
and so ham-fisted that it doesn't actually like engage the viewer that it just doesn't do anything i left the theater with my dad going like that wasn't a good movie was it and he's mm -hmm. like no <laughs> but it's the highest grossing film second highest grossing film in the world that's why it needed to be taken down <laughs> So yeah, it, it I I kind of agree with you there. It like it was a movie that seemed interesting and it has prospects of the movie that I do enjoy like because the visuals, I'm a visual person. But uh <laughs> uh I do kind of agree with you. Especially one of the things that I love about this movie is how expensive this film was to make and it's all about saving the environment and not ruining the cultures and whatnot, but it's just so counterintuitive to the message it sends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last bit of news here before I talk about us. Um, according to The Guardian, Borat 2 is imminent. And it's suggested to take place with Trump, S Epstein, and Giuliani as the targets of the film with Borat. Not surprised. We did see... I don't know if you saw the clip of him uh, being driven around. As always driving kind of thing, but the like the crew in the back of the moving truck have not filming him. Yeah. So this is this has kind of been in the works. Mm -hmm. It says here um, reports that Sasha Baron Cohen has filmed and test screened a sequel to his 2006 comedy hit Borat cultural learnings of America for making benefit glorious man uh, have gathered place with the news that the title of the film has been submitted to the Writers Guild of America. Borat gift of pornographic monkey to vice premier Michael Pence to benefit, make benefit recently diminished nations of it's Mikhail because it's supposed to be Russian. Yeah. Mikhail Pence to make benefit recently diminished nation of Kazakhstan was submitted to the writers guild in the last few days. <laughs> so I would 100% watch this. Oh, same. <laughs> I bet it's going to be great and terrible all at the same time. As it probably should be. <laughs> I mean, it like I kind of look forward to it because it's been a while since we've just gotten a dumb. But the thing is because his name's Sasha Baron, right? Yeah. America, yeah. He's very political. Yes. I can't wait to see this. Like I the the thing that I could compare him to is maybe like modern day Mel Brooks, where it yeah where it's like the comedy could be very well taken the wrong way, but it's political and it can get into some of the nitty gritty of the times and just yeah like I worry about it at the same time because I don't know how this will fit into our modern ecosystem. Like it's a movie that I one hundred percent want to watch because he's a funny guy and. Like, I like the original Borat, but at the same time, it's like, will it work? Is this a movie that'll make money? Like, I, I don't know if it'll make I don't know. It's, it's time will tell. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, this is a, it's a premise that's 14 years old at this point. It might not fit into the modern era. So, well, we'll have to see, like you said. Yeah. Uh, all right. Last thing. This one's all about us because we like talking about ourselves. Next month's schedule. Woo! You want to hit it? Sure. Hey, Tev, did you know it's Halloween or October next month? <laughs> oh, is it? It's yeah. October next month. I mean, I'm Sorry, not sure if... for our shows? Sure. I mean, I'm not sure oh, if Halloween... I mean, that means we should probably do uh, do some scary stuff, right? Yeah, right. I would think so. So... All right. Well, then, uh, I guess we'll start with foreign horror slash thrillers with uh, one cut of the dead and Parasite. Yeah. Especially um, because, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, cultural appropriation and whitewashing and... Uh, let's watch something that wasn't whitewashed. Yeah. Watch, watch <laughs> foreign films that are pretty good. I'm actually really excited for one cut of the dead. I'm really excited for Parasite. <laughs> that one's probably going to be good, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, week after that is our triple header because um, we like doing one of these a month um, and this one was 100% Steven's idea and I loved it as soon as he said it uh, Friday the 13th part 2 um, Nightmare on Elm Street and Freddy vs. Jason 
Yeah, so we get to see um, our first Jenny, J- Freddy appearance, our first Jason appearance, and then we get to watch them fight. Let yes. them fight. <laughs> um, week after that, we're doing Halloween and Halloween 2, Rob Zombie Edition. Yeah. Um, and then Dawn of the Dead, 1978, and Dawn of the Dead, 2004. Yeah, so yeah we're following the Rob Zombie with actual zombies, with George Romero zombies, and we're going to compare the old and the not as old. <laughs> Oh, Train to Busan would have been a good one, too. Which one? Train to Busan. Huh. We got to put that on the docket at some point. <laughs> one of your favorites is Freddy vs. Jason. I mean, it's not... It's a... such a dumb movie. I love it. It's, it's going to su- be great. It, I, it's such a terrible bastardization of the two characters. Like, it's good. It's a terrible good movie. But it's not. I can't wait. It's not those characters, man. <laughs> no, I can't wait though. <laughs> oh, dude, growing oh. up, the reason why I love horror so much is re- literally Friday the Thirteenth and Freddy vs. J- and like the Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, movies. Nightmare on Elm Street. Me and my mom, like, she made it a point for me to watch every single one of those movies growing up. I watched every Friday the Thirteenth. There's like Same. fourteen of those films, man. My mom would put, because Sci-Fi Channel would have all of them air every October, so my mom would put on, oh, I love Friday the 13th. And then my dumbass would be like, oh, what are these about? Mm-hmm. I it's, still- why, it's also why my, my thoughts on horror movies, and we'll see if this month holds it up, but I don't think any of these movies are going to scare me. Probably not, no. Because like- I don't, like, no, no movie, uh, we've only had what? We had the Conjuring movie, which kind of startled me, mm-hmm. but it's a good horror movie. We had Get Out and Us, which is more psychological scares in certain points, mm-hmm. which work better on me. But no other horror movies have really done it for me. I th- I think Parasite might actually do it for you then, because that's I'm a hoping. psychological thriller. I mean, I'm it's hoping. also comedy. I'm hoping. That's, I'm hoping, man. That's one small undertone for next week that I'm kind of not looking forward to, is both of these movies have a bit of comedy thrown in them. Well, so does uh, Freddy vs. Jason. That It's also a lot more action-y, so... <laughs> they just changed. It's, not, it's not really horror, it's an action comedy. Yeah, it's for... kind of what it's become. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, oh, I but, can't wait for next month. But that's also kind of what happened with like Friday the Thirteenth Ten with Jason in space. It became more of an action, uh, com- yeah. and it was just funny, <laughs> so it became an action comedy. <laughs> oh, I can't wait! It's gonna be a good next. It's gonna be a good month, everybody. It's gonna be great and terrible. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. Like I cannot wait. I can't see it. I can't and I can't. It's going to be great. Oh, God. All right. We're done. I'm just kidding. So, yeah. Oh, pretty much. Yeah, we're pretty much done here. So, thanks very much, everybody, for watching us. Uh, hit the likes, the subscribes, the follows, the bells, the, you know, leave a message and whatnot. I'll probably actually upload these soon. I should have. It's only been like three months. I've done it. I need to write descriptions to the old ones so that we uh, for the Har Har podcasts. I keep forgetting to do that. Ooh, that'd be nice. <laughs> so Listen, um, I fucking forget. <laughs> so yeah, thanks everybody for being here, and um, we will see you guys next week for One Cut of the Dead and Parasite. See ya. Hey, Bye. I think there's something behind you.